Good evening. This is Political Forum for Wednesday, February 4th. We welcome our guest, Alderman Joe Moreno of the First Ward. Thank you so much for appearing, Alderman Moreno. Thank, thank on you this for having me. Thank forum. you for having me. Good to be here. I'm Teresa Cordoba, board member here at CAN TV. This is a live, interactive program brought to you as a community service from CAN TV. So we very much welcome your questions and your comments for Alderman Moreno. And you can call us at 312-738-1060. You can see that phone number up on your screen. So during the next 25 minutes, we'll try to get in as many calls as we can. And we hope that we'll, we'll, this will be your opportunity to be able to ask questions of Alderman Moreno. So we've had a lot of snow last yes, few days. Yes, yes. Absolutely. How absolutely. are things going in your ward? Uh, they're going well. Um, you know, there's, it's always a challenge, obviously, when you get this much snow. Uh, but what I've done is also uh, invested some campaign money uh, mm -hmm. to a first ward company uh, that has a plowing business and are out there supplementing uh, side streets and alleys. Uh, we started two days ago uh, with a list of requests from residents. We started with our senior citizens and some folks that are disabled, um, prioritizing those and then trying to get to areas that are just not as well hit mm -hmm. because it might be one ways that mm -hmm. dead end, et cetera. We're not going to be able to get to everybody, but we've got uh, plenty of lists from Facebook, from Twitter, from calls to my office, and we're doing our best to get to as many as we can. I also have a snowblower that uh, I purchased with campaign funds that we hit some sidewalks and, and whatnot. Oh, so nice. um, knock on wood, I think we're doing pretty well under the conditions, uh, and we're trying to get to everybody. And we're actually on a second and third round on a lot of the side streets. So there's been um, a, a lot of... Um a, a lot of talk uh, also about the about the diversity of the first ward. You've mm -hmm. got a very diverse ward. So yeah. tell us about your ward. Uh, the first ward is a majority Latino ward still. Um, uh, it's made up of the neighborhoods of basically Wicker Park, East mm -hmm. Village, Humble Park, Logan Square, a little bit of Ukrainian Village, and parts of West Town. Um, and you know it it is the soci the socio economic diversity of the ward is its strength. Mm -hmm. uh, not its weakness. I think in the past some mm -hmm. folks have tried to divide that. Um, and what I've tried to do is there's so many linked concerns between the constituencies, whether they have, a, you know, not a lot of money, which I grew up with not a lot of money, or they might have a, a little bit more money. Um, they basically have the same concerns. They want good schools. They want clean and, mm -hmm. and passable streets. Um, they want an alderman that reflects uh, their needs, and I think I've done that over the last four years, and uh, I'm proud to get the Sun Times endorsement today uh, for that work. Uh, but we've got more to do. Um, we've got a lot more to do, and I'm really excited to uh, start a second term uh, in May. Well, I imagine they also want affordable housing. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's very much. Um, <clears throat> and before I became alderman, I was on the board of Humble Park Social Services, obviously a social service agency that did just that. It's near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, my neighbors directly to me are in, in affordable housing across the street. And then there's some, you know, other homes that are, you know, million dollar homes. That's the diversity of that ward. So the larger developments, uh, we strongly encourage uh, those that are doing that to not buy out of it and put the housing in mm -hmm. the affordable housing per hour ordinance in the ward. And we've been successful on many fronts at Chicago and uh, by Commercial Park at Ashland and Division. Uh, we just approved two more from Milwaukee Avenue. They're gonna do it on site. Uh, mm -hmm. So Western and Cortland, all these larger developments, we're going to bring more affordable housing that doesn't doesn't um, exist today, and I'm proud of that. We're going to keep pushing that forward. I noticed that you use social media. You're mentioning the the, uh, the use yeah. of Twitter and Facebook and, and reaching out to your constituents or enabling them to reach out to you. Absolutely. This seems like a really good way to have some pretty broad communication from your constituents. Absolutely. I I have I believe still the most followers on Twitter. Um, of any alderman or, or, or elected official besides probably the mayor or the governor. Um, and it's a great way to interact. Um, it has to be embraced these days and you can take it even further uh, than that being on, being on Instagram and other social media aspects. It really allows for a, a good dialogue with, with the constituents. So you're pretty accessible to your constituents. I pride we, myself on that, yeah. We, well, that's great. We've got a caller coming in. Great. I have a question about um, transit-oriented development. Now, I think it's a great idea to, you know, try and encourage people to have less cars. Sure. But how do you know that? So, for instance, if you're building, you know, if you're to build more housing by the Division Blue Line stop, that there's the capacity to absorb, you know, as you add more and more housing around these T 
PTA stops or bus lines because I know I mean uh, the the L stops get pretty full already in the mornings and right. It's a great question. I actually authored and passed uh, the TOD Transit Oriented Development Ordinance. The city struggled with that for six or seven years. Uh, I passed it first citywide, and now there's a second ordinance that the the mayor passed as well. There are two. Um, and briefly, as you know, what it calls for is density by our hard rail. Uh, Center for Neighborhood Technology, to your density question, actually did a study, and we're way behind in terms of this kind of development to Boston, New York, and other large cities, as Chicago is. Uh, so the first one in the city that's been built in the neighborhoods is in my ward, Chicago, and, I'm sorry, Division and Ashland, 99 units, no parking, 10% uh, truly affordable units on site, and we have written in the lease that the I will not give an exemption for them to park on the permit parking street next to it. But I got to tell you, we really didn't even need to do that because in the 18 months it's been open, only one person, Theresa, one person has come to my office asking for a parking permit. I knocked on doors in there a couple months ago. About a third of the residents were home. Not one has a car, needs a oh, car, so they're or really wants using a car. the transit then. Indoor bike parking mm -hmm. across the street from the L. And that's the before we had that development, we had a dilapidated pizza hut. Blight on the community. The only thing that could be built would be another one story McDonald's, bank, etc. Now we've got 99 units, uh, 10 affordable, $300,000 in tax revenue a year, uh, $28 million project that had 150 uh, union jobs for 18 months. So uh, that's the kind of development the CTA can handle it. And uh, we're going to do more and more of that. It's a great question, though. So that you imagine that that's also going to create some eco economic activity in that area then as part of the transit oriented development? A absolutely, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> we have to put more infrastructure into, as the caller said, into our CTA, our bus lines, and our um, our bike lanes. However, um, I know it's everyone talks about economic development, but let's actually get something done mm -hmm. that also provides for some affordable units. We also have a non for profit that's being housed in there. We have a local coffee shop that's in there, and we have a beautiful, humongous, this is 11 stories, Teresa. So mm -hmm. about nine of the stories, it would you think, oh, my gosh, there's going to be a huge billboard there. Mm -hmm. It's dedicated in the, uh, in the um, ordinance that was passed for this site for art, rotating art. Oh, very nice. So um, I think it's a, a big win for our neighborhood. So how does the ordinance itself enable the TOD to happen in the given area? So what it does is, again, you can never build on that site without the parking requirements uh, that the city requires. So this ordinance reduces the parking tremendously, okay? okay? Um, and and also when they reduce the parking, the developer can put that money into other things like mm -hmm. not have, having to have a billboard to generate money, not have, having to be, be able to do on-site okay. affordable housing, right? And if people don't actually need or want a car, that's the place to be. And we, we're seeing more and more of our population um, in the city relying on the rail, the Divi bike station that's right across okay. the street. Okay. There's so many opportunities. You can't just build it and not have the infrastructure. Okay. So the ordinance calls for it to be very near hard rail. So this is not the only citywide ordinance though that you have, have had passed. Um, what else? You have, because you also, aren't you responsible for the plastic bag ordinance? Sure, yeah, Tressa, I'm glad you brought that up. We, um, we worked on that for about 18 months. Um, in August, uh, plastic bags, we use three billion with a B every year in the city. And I don't have to tell the audience or yourself, we see them in our trees, our lake, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our, our sidewalks, our mm -hmm. gutters, our sewers. And they're a relic of yesterday's economy. Mm -hmm. um, that costs you taxpayer money to get rid of all of that. Um, obviously, the environmental impact is devastating. And so we were able to pass a citywide uh, ordinance that will not allow stores of 10,000 square feet or, or larger, or if stores are smaller than that and they're franchised, like 7-Eleven, they're going to have to change their ways. And the ultimate goal is for people to bring their bag, bring their own bags, and we'll get there. Um, it's a behavior change. My parents filled their um, gas tank up. When they went to get their gas tank filled up, someone did it for them. Uh, that's foreign to most people now, right? Yeah, the, beha right. <laughs> the behavior has changed, and this behavior will change as well. Mm -hmm. So we're all stocking up on our canvas bags, right? Mm, yes, absolutely. We've got another caller coming in. Great. Yes, good afternoon, Alderman Moreno. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my question to you is, do you support elected school board? Sure, great question. Um, not only do I support it, I... Uh, 38 or 39 wards are going to have that question on the ballot for you to vote on, my ward being one of them. And I, myself, and my volunteers and my political organization uh, 
uh, got that ordinate, I'm sorry, got that petition signed ourselves, 2,000 residents signed it so that question could be on. I was the only alderman or candidate that I know of that did it. Um, however, an elected school board, I want to be very clear, it's not a panacea for reform. Um, one point on this. Our current school board, we know our, our schools need money, and our current school board always raises the tax as high as they can. And my concern is if you put elected officials in there, are they really all going to run on raising taxes? You know, that's not really a popular thing for elected officials to do. So I support a hybrid model to start. Let's get some elected school board members on there. And the main reason that I support this is that we need our teachers and our parents of CPS students represented on that board. And they're not today. So let's, you know, if, it's, if you're in my ward, you can vote on it. If you're in the other 38 wards, you can vote. Should the, uh, should the elected school board, should the school board be elected by the voters? Um, and I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna pass wildly in my ward, but we'll see. We have another caller. Yes, good evening. Good evening. I have a question with you uh, concerning uh, uh, permit parking. Now I know like there's a lot of parks in your ward and a lot of visitors like to come in and uh, visit the, you know, those areas and enjoy the parks. Um, so, but they have a hard time possibly finding parking because if there's going to be permit parking you know, on top of that, especially as homeowners, like when we have contractors, uh, people who need to work on the house and you live in an area that has permit parking, where are those contractors going to be parking? So it, it's sort of a headache and I'm just trying to check out to what, what your, your stance is. Yeah, so it's um, permit parking is uh, definitely a very opinionated uh, uh, issue within my ward. There are some people that love it, and there are some people that absolutely hate it. Uh, I have my policy is the 65% of the residents, uh, car owners with VIN numbers that we check, need to sign a petition to have permit parking on their street. Um, and again, some people love it and some people don't. But if you do have a contractor or a nanny or a caregiver, please come to my office. Uh, my information, I'm sure they'll put up or call my office because we can make exemptions for people that are realistically, um, and there's my information, that have realistic um, visitors that are doing that. You could also uh, buy permits, visitor permits in my office. Uh, I think they're eight, eight or $9 for 15 of those that you can use for your visitors. Uh, but it is definitely... Again, some people absolutely love and want permit parking, and there's others that don't. We try to balance that by getting more than 50% of the people that support it. Um, and um, that's the policy that I put in place in the first ward. Great. Well, you have an MBA in, uh, obviously, a Master's in Business right. Administration. Sure. So I'm wondering how that background influences the kinds of things that maybe you focus on in your ward. Well... It's, uh, it's unique on the council. I'm not saying that it's better or worse than anything else. We do have a lot of attorneys, a lot of folks that came through the city of Chicago. Um, and I think, you know, my, my, my business background uh, gives me the lens for our business owners and others that are doing business with the city on how important it is to get their permits quickly, to get their licenses to open the restaurant quickly. You know, the ward is made up of mainly, and this is another unique and, and why I'm so proud to, to represent it, mainly independent local entrepreneurs and they can't go 30 60 days uh waiting on they're not at&t they can't wait so long on these permits and to get the licensing uh the mayor has done a good job in cutting that red tape i push it even more because i know what it's like to have to make a payroll i know what it's like to, um, to work for a company that um employs union members we i was i was a vice president of a union printing company that's still doing very well today so i think that perspective teresa um, gives me a, a good perspective on what it actually means to run a business and to make a payroll and to employ people um, and to do business in the ward. And to help facilitate entrepreneurship even further in your ward, it sounds like. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that's what I majored in at, mm. at DePaul, uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, it is, uh, a lot of times entrepreneurs have a ton of energy and great ideas and really unique, but they need to sort of have their accounting mm -hmm. side um, and, and other parts of the, the business that you have to do that aren't as, that are a little more boring and um, try to help them and, and, and guide them that way. We have another caller. Great. Hi, Alderman. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth discussion about bringing a, cas a casino to Chicago. Sure. Um, what's your point of view on that? Another great question. I actually grew up in Moline, Illinois, um, right next door to Rock Island, Illinois, where the first casino, uh, Riverboat Casino at the time, was placed. So I, I kind of lived with that. Uh, I believe the sort of moral arguments uh, and debate are pretty much over. Some 
won and some lost. We have a casino in Indiana, in Michigan, and Wisconsin. And if you go to the parking lots of those casinos, you see Illinois plates all, all over there. In fact, Horseshoe Casino advertises Chicago's casino. So my position is that I do support the casino downtown or um, close to downtown. We're losing tax dollars. People are already deciding to gamble. They're already taking trips. Free buses leave Chinatown every day multiple times to take people. So we need to, we need to keep that tax revenue in our city. I don't buy the argument with my experience growing up in Moline that if you put it in an area that's so-called blighted, that it's going to bring other development. That did not happen in Rock Island. They brought it into the downtown. Some development came, but long term, it didn't help that area, and they actually moved the casino. So I would, I would say, put it downtown. So tourists and visitors, um, and conventioners, uh, we'd like to have their tax dollars stay here and not go to Indiana. Another caller. Hi, Alderman. Safety is an issue in the city, and I just want to know what. Um, are some initiatives that you're working on to ensure that the first ward stays safe? Another great question. Um, our numbers are down across the board, but again, it's not time to spike the football. We, we have to do more. Uh, one thing that I did is we had a closed police station. Dilapid Don't you get penalties for spiking footballs now? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely for deflating them. Definitely yeah, for right. deflating them, right? Or hopefully we get penalties. Um, but uh, we brought a sheriff station into there. Um, we've got sheriffs on site every day. Now, they're not out and taking calls and, and, and arresting folks, but their presence, just their presence in our neighborhood, driving their vehicles, uh, helps with the safety and security of our neighborhood. I also do drive arounds with our commanders at late, late night. And the one thing, um, you know, I'm not the police, and I know that some aldermen may say, you know, call 911, that's not my job. I do have a role in security and safety. Usually in our ward, we, when we have problems, gang, uh, drug problems, you can usually identify it to one or two houses in the block. And we've done a tremendous job. We've shut down seven of these, either physically demolished them or evicted um, them because I've called for inspections. And there's usually nine times out of ten that the house will have some sort of, uh, uh, sort, of, sort of problems that they're not in compliance, and that's how we've gotten at them. And I'm going to continue to do that with these problem houses. And again... Usually, at least in the first ward, when we have these issues, we can identify and point it to one or two houses. Uh, when we've had these successes, 99% of the issues within that area have gone away, and I'm going to continue to be vigilant on that. You're watching Political Forum, a community service of CAN TV. I'm Teresa Cordova, board member at CAN TV, and we are here with First Ward Alderman Joe Moreno. This is an interactive show, so please call in now, 312-738-1060. We did have a question come in via the internet, and that question involves Milwaukee Avenue. They want to know, what is your vision for Milwaukee Avenue? And in particular, what do you think about that dual tower? Great, great question. So uh, they're referring to, I actually have Milwaukee Avenue from Ashland to Sacramento with a little spot in, that is not in my ward in the 32nd ward. Uh, I think the question's referring to Western to Sacramento, um, where the Congress Theater is now going to be mm -hmm. brought back to life by a tremendous, excellent uh, developer that redeveloped. That's exciting. Yeah, very exciting. That's we just had an open exciting. house last Saturday. He redeveloped uh, 312 Restaurant, Allegro Hotel, and the Cadillac Theater, so he knows what he's doing. Mm. Um, we've got many more little restaurants and shops coming in. It, it, it's really great to see that part of, the, of, the, of Milwaukee Avenue uh, turning around. And what they're referring to in the towers is the TOD ordinance that I passed. There's a site that's right by the California Blue Line that fits perfectly for TOD. Um, so the, there was a plan done by my predecessor in the city in 2008. Um, and part of that plan for Milwaukee Avenue was TOD. The community was engaged, uh, was TOD type developments. Um, I think it's a, it was done at a different time. 2008 is way different than 15, a different economic time. Some of the things it calls for in there are, are not really doable these days, but we can do TOD. I do not support, and I've said this, uh, the current plan that we had. A, I hosted a community meeting on and said, look, I don't necessarily support this plan, but I want to tell you what I do support. I do support density. I do support affordable housing that comes with that density. But this particular plan happens to be a little too tall and a little too dense. So we're, I told the developers, if they'd like to come back to the community, bring me back a plan to review. Uh, they said they were willing to do that. We just haven't seen the plan yet. 
Okay. But we're not going to go forward on the current plan. I want to be fair, straight with that. Okay, so you've, besides focusing on your ward, again, you have demonstrated your interest in doing things that are citywide. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Something else you've done <clears throat> has been part of, you've been part of a, a group of folks that put forward the $15 an hour um, minimum wage. wage increase. Yep. Maybe you can speak to that. Of course. Uh, when we introduced that, we were working uh, a lot with SEIU. Um, when I, I was the lead sponsor of the $15 minimum wage uh, a year or so ago, more than a year ago. And at the time, those uh, said, uh, those that we introduced and were not really for it, said, you know, you're never going to get 15 you're, You might get $10. Um, and we pushed very, very hard. Um, the administration came on board with a $13 minimum wage. 44 aldermen supported it. Something that's very important too, in our $15 minimum wage ordinance, we cover domestic workers. Uh, the, the $13 minimum wage that was finally presented by the working group of aldermen and others did not cover those. So we were able to get some things like domestic workers into the ordinance that passed. I'm st so we had, 13 was a good win. We still need to push for 15 in my opinion. And I think it just shows Teresa, when I introduced it, you're crazy, etc. cetera. Uh, but um, we got 13, which is a lot more than 10. Mm -hmm. And you can call your alderman, Alderman Joe Moreno, at 2015 Northwestern Avenue, where his office is, and there's his phone number up there on, on the screen. Um, another caller, or another person who wrote in via the um, internet also was interested in your thoughts about campaign financing and, and the uh, money as it relates to to issues around um, yeah. around politics. Well, I mean, obviously the ultimate would be to have some public financing of campaigns. Um, unfortunately, the tide is turning against that with Citizens United and other Supreme Court rulings. Um, on the flip side of that, I would say this. Uh, you know, I was involved... Uh, with many campaigns as a volunteer, uh, donator, um, and progressive campaigns mainly. State Senator Barack Obama when he ran for U.S. Senate mm -hmm. and then other local elections. Um, I think on the progressive side, we, we, we need to fight for public financing but realize that the game is where it is now. And if we want to be serious about it, you have to be able to and go out and raise money. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's the way that it is these days. Um, it's unfortunate it's gotten to the, to the heights that it has, but... I am very proud to be the alderman and be a progressive alderman. I am going to raise the finances. It's my responsibility to run a good campaign and a year-round award organization. Well, we have uh, enough time for one more caller very quickly here. Let's go for the caller. Caller. Hello. Hi. 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 How are you doing? I'm We're good. doing great. Um, oh well, where I work at, um, I went up my I went up ten dollars an hour from where I work at. I don't know why where other people work at, but what I really want to ask you is, what do you think about racial profiling for the police? Sure, the racial profiling question. Uh, very quickly, I wish I could spend another half hour on this. I used to be a board member of the campaign and the death penalty when we had the death penalty in the state. And then, obviously, the John Bird's torture, that's, we were on top of that back in 99 and 2000. Um, the racial profiling, uh, obviously, is illegal. And as a Latino and working on those campaigns, saw it firsthand, um, not experienced it personally, but worked with Bird's torture victims that obviously experienced it. Um, it plays no place. It should play no place in our policing and in our society. And we just need to continue to push forward and al not allow for that kind of uh, behavior. Most police don't. Let's just say this: we have a great police force. It's the rotten, you know, apples that 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 throw out the whole cart. You have about thirty seconds for a final comment. Oh, great, Teresa. Well, that went really quick. First of all, I really enjoyed being on here. Um, for those of you that again uh, are in my ward, uh, give us a call: seven seven three two seven eight zero one zero one. I have ward night every Tuesday night from 4 to 7, where you can just stop in uh, and see me and talk to me about anything. Um, and sign up for my newsletter on my website, aldermanmoreno.com. There you go. Thank you so much, Alderman Moreno, for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you, viewers, and thank you for your phone calls. Our telephone technician has been Sylvia. Political Forum is brought to you by Can TV as a community service. Please join in again on Wednesday, February 11th, 
when our guest will be State Representative Arthur Turner, Jr. Thank you so much and good night.